right? At this time, if St. Patrick's Day brought Catholicism, then why are they getting excessively drunk, drinking beers? If that's what they celebrate, you understand that? See how that contradicts the Bible? Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you are the children of Israel according to the Bible. That's right. All right? Mm -hmm. This Bible is for you. The Most High God chose you above all people on the face of this planet. But what happens is this. We decide we want to follow the heathens. We want to do all type of wickedness and do what they do. All right? Go. Hold that. Let's get, uh, uh, let's get Proverbs. Let's get Proverbs. Uh, uh, Proverbs 3 and 31. All right, because a lot of times what we do is we take on the customs of the oppressors with no question. We take on the, the customs of our enemies with no questions. Right. You understand? All right, read that. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 31. You know, envy thou not the oppressor and choose none of his ways. Envy thou not the oppressor and choose none of his ways. Hey, sis, sis, you know your nationality according to the Bible? What's your, what's your nationality? I would say I'm in between an African American and Irish. You're between an African American and an Irish? Okay, okay. All right. So we're going to find out what the Bible says, okay? All right. Now, why do you say African American or Irish? What is your father? Get that in numbers. I think so, both. Your father is both? What about your grandmother? I mean, your grandfather. I'm sorry. The same? All right. Well, let me give you this. All right. Let's get Numbers chapter 1 and verse 18. Come on. Numbers chapter 1 and verse 18. Bring it out. And they assemble all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. And they declare their pedigrees after their families by the house of their fathers. By the house of their mothers. By the house of their fathers. All right. So the thing is, sis, is that you are who you are because of the seed of your fathers, right. all right? There's no mixing, all right, of seeds. Whatever your father is, your father's father, your father's father's father, that's what you are. You understand that? And a lot of us don't know who our fathers are because of slavery. You understand? Right. Either going from one plantation to the next. Now, some people will say you brought up Irish. Right now, people are uh, celebrating St. Patrick's Day today, right? I had somebody this week tell me, oh, on Saturday, everybody's going to be Irish. Really? That's not possible. What did the Bible just say? Read, read that again. Numbers 1 and 18. It said that everybody is Irish on Saturday. Is that possible? You know, Did, didn't like a, 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 a year and a half, two years ago, a little black boy got uh, beat up, got murdered because he went into an Irish pub on St. Patrick's Day? And everybody forget that. And we still gonna go in those pubs today and drink the green beer and, 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 and look at the green fountain and think everything's okay. But it's not okay, you understand that? That is, a, a, uh, that is what our oppressors do or did, you understand? Now, a lot of our people, read that, let's read that again because everybody is not Irish, come on. Numbers chapter one and verse 18. And they assemble all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. Uh -huh. And they declare their pedigrees after their families by the house of their fathers. All right, by the house of their fathers. All right, so you are who your fathers is. First Peter chapter four and verse two. All right, because what happens is this, sis. We come out here on the Sabbath, we tell our people and we show them according to the Bible that your heritage, your customs, who you are, are the children of Israel. All right, that, that's who we are. The laws of God are our heritage, our customs. Our feast days are written here. Right. In Leviticus 23, you understand? And also in, uh, in the Apocrypha as well. So the thing is, is that this is our history book. These are our customs. This is who we are. You understand that? And it's not St. Patrick's Day. What is St. Patrick's Day about, sis? Um, it's about people like in Ireland, in Irish, to celebrate the people who are from Okay, I mean, what does that, what does that mean? But because, and I'm going to tell you this, sis, is that a lot of times our people celebrate those things with no explanation. Right. They don't have to know the history. All I got to know is grandma did it. 
All I got to know is grandpa did it. And they really don't worry about grand, uh, grandpa because most of us don't have no grandfather in the house. Right. We have grandma. We have Mima. You have uh, my aunt and them. That's what you have. And that's how you follow. And that's what you follow because they constantly do it. But the thing is, is to find out what St. Patrick's Day is about. And I'm telling you, sis, it's not about you. Right. It's about the oppression of your people. Right. You understand that? Let's read that. First Peter chapter 4 and verse 2. That he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. To the will of God, all right? So we're not supposed to follow out of the lust of men. We're supposed to follow under the will of God. The will of God is this Bible, all right? Hold, hold that. Let's get Romans chapter 2 and verse 18. Because a lot of our people, they will say, all right, well, you didn't tell me what the will of God is. Oh, I know what the will of God is. The will of God is whatever God tell me to do in my heart. Or like the old folks used to say in my mind's eye. All right, hey, brother, you know your nationality according to the Bible? What's your nationality? What's your heritage that God gave you? All right, and not the heritage of your oppressor. All right, read that. Romans chapter 2 and verse 18. And knows his will and approves the things that are more excellent. All right, so right now, hey, sis, brother, right now we're reading the Bible. We're going over what the will of God is. A lot, of, a lot of our people think they know what the will of God is. Sis, what is the will of God? She was looking and smiling. What is the will of God? Hey, sis, what is the will of God? What is the will of God? Brother, you know what God's will is? What is God's will? You don't know? Hey, brother, come out. What's God's will? You out of that, bro? Yeah, We're going to show what God's thing. will is. All right, read that from the top again. Romans chapter 2 and verse 18. Uh huh. And knoweth his will. And approves the things that are more excellent. Approves the things that are more excellent. So these things that is about to come up as the will of God are more excellent than anything else in this world. Right. All right, come on. Being instructed out of the law. Being what? Being instructed out of the law. So the laws of God is God's will. Right. You understand? That's what brings you to a kingdom. That's what brings you to royalty. Right. You understand? But in our churches, they say God's laws are done away with. But, hey, you can celebrate St. Patrick's Day. You can celebrate Christmas. You can celebrate Easter. All right? And not understanding that all those come from Roman Catholicism. You understand that? You Let's go back to Peter's. All right? Because you look back at the history, it's like uh, uh, Patrick, in which his name wasn't even Patrick, he was taken from Great Britain. And brought and brought into Ireland and what happened is that he was able he was able after he got out of he brought he was brought into slavery and after he got out of slavery then he was able to preach Christianity all across the world you understand all across Ireland he was able to uh, not across the world across Ireland all right so he brought Christianity Catholicism to Ireland why are you celebrating that you know why it, why are you celebrating that it doesn't make any sense our people, we, it's like we had a sister earlier today walk up and down the street with green on. St. Patrick's Day. I'm just enjoying St. Patrick's Day. But it's not about you. Right. You understand? And anyway, the doctrine that Patrick was toting, because he's not a saint. Let, let's show that in the Bible. Let's get, let's get saint. Who the saints are according to this Bible. No. All right? No. Because Patrick was not a saint. If he wasn't Israel, he is not a saint. You understand? And we're going to prove that according to the Bible. All right? Because, sis... Haven't you heard that a lot in, like, in Catholicism? You might not have really looked at or studied Catholicism, but they have a saint for this, a saint for that, a saint for everything in the world. All right? And it's like even, even they have uh, the certain popes and they call them saints, but that don't stop them from messing with little boys. You understand? So we're going to find out who the saints are according to this Bible. Go ahead. Psalms chapter 50 and verse 5. Gather my saints together unto me. Those that have those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Uh -huh. So, sis, the only people that made a covenant by sacrifice is Israel. You understand that? My saints. Come on. Psalms chapter 148 and 14. He also exalted the heart of his of his people, the, the praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel. Read that again. Even of the children of Israel. So the saints are the children of Israel, sis. You understand that? 
So the saints are the children of Israel. Those are the ones that actually made a covenant with the Most High God. Let's go back to Peter's. Go ahead. First Peter chapter four and verse three. For the time past of our own life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. All right, so what happened is this, is because we were brought over here in captivity, it's like we started following the customs of the Gentiles. Those weren't things that we did. And what Gentiles just mean the other nations. You understand? All right? So hold that. Let's get uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28. And let's start at verse 15, all right? And then we're going to jump down to uh, 64. All right, come on. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. Bring it out. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, uh -huh. to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, uh -huh. which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. All right, so if in Deuteronomy 28 it goes over blessings that will come upon us for keeping God's laws and commandments, and curses that will come upon us for not keeping God's laws and commandments. You understand that? All right. So this is one of the curses that came upon us for not keeping God's laws and commandments. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. Therefore, shall thy serve thy enemies. 64. Okay. 64. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from one end of the earth even unto the other. All right, so we were scattered from one end of the earth even to the other. That means over the whole earth. You understand, sis? That's where we were scattered to, all right? Come on. That's your so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, all right? Come on. And there thou shalt serve other gods which neither thy nor thy father have known, even wood and stone. All right, so when we got to those places, all right, just like here in America, we follow wood and stone, all right? So, in this particular uh, thing with St. Pat with Patrick's, uh, whatever it's, it's called, St. Patrick's Day, all right, they gave us Catholicism, and which that came with the, in the white image of Christ, all right? No. They made Christ a so-called white man, you understand? But that's not what Christ looks like according to the Bible, you understand? Right. All right? So, has anybody ever showed that to you? Yeah, my dad. Your dad has showed you? Okay, all praise, all, all praise. So Christ is, uh, you know that Christ is a black man. Let's go back that to, uh, back to that in Peter's. Come on. First Peter chapter four verse three. Uh -huh. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. Uh -huh. When we walk in lasciviousness. All right, we walked in lasciviousness. That's a strong, that's an evil, strong sexual lust. You understand? So in us following lasciviousness, all the different orgies and customs that they had, we started doing those things, sis. You understand that? Come on. Lust, uh -huh. excess of wine, reveling, banqueting. All right, reveling, all right? At this time, if St. Patrick's Day brought Catholicism, then why are they getting excessively drunk, drinking beers, if that's what they celebrate? You understand that? See how that contradicts the Bible? All right, they're not the saints of God. They're not the people of God. Right. All right, and those people following those customs, they look at you weird. The Bible is going to say that. They look at you weird if you keeping God's laws and commandments. You understand? If you got fringes on, you got a, you got a beard as a woman. We're going to show you some laws that pertain to you as a woman. All right, come on. And abominable idolatries. And abominable idolatries. So that's what you're following if you follow on St. Patrick's Day. Right. If you follow on Easter, following all these. Uh, uh, different religions right. and the different celebrations and practices that they got. You're following idolatries. You understand? And idolatries, that's your fashion, you're following idols. You understand? Come on. Wherein they think it's strange that we, that ye run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. So because we don't walk around celebrating St. Patrick's Day, because we don't celebrate Christmas, they look at us and be like, oh man, you know, something wrong with you. You got a problem. You're not drinking green, green beer with us. You're not sitting and admiring the green fountain with us. You're not, you're, where's your shamrock, brother? Where's your shamrock? Looking at you like this a problem with you. But you're actually supposed to be keeping God's laws and commandments. You understand that? Right. All right, because we didn't go into slavery because uh, we weren't keeping St. Patrick's Day, because we weren't keeping Easter. We went into slavery because we weren't keeping God's laws and commandments. Right. Let's get um, 
Real quick, let's get Luke chapter 1, verse 68. Bring it out. Luke chapter 1, verse 68. Come on. Luke chapter 1, verse 68. Bring it out. Blessed be the Lord, God of Israel, uh -huh. for he had visited and redeemed his people Come on. and had raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David uh -huh. as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, Come on. which have, have been since the world began, uh -huh. that we should be saved from our enemies. All right. That we should be saved from our enemies. So Christ came to save us from our enemies. All right. Those that took us into slavery, that caused us to follow their false religions, false doctrines. You understand? All right. That caused us to celebrate Christmas. Right. That caused us to celebrate St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. You understand? Those are the things that Christ come to save us from. So we could keep his laws and commandments. Brother, you know your nationality according to the Bible? All right. Right now we're going over salvation according to the Bible. All right. Come on. And from the hand of all that hate us. And from the hand of all that hate us. All right. Jump down to verse 74. Luke chapter 1 verse 74. That he would grant us that we being delivered out of the hand of our of our enemies might serve him without fear. All right, so the thing is, is to serve the Most High God without fear. That he will help us and save us from this oppression so that we can serve him without fear. Right. You understand? So that's the thing. It's like when you go around and you're not celebrating St. Patrick's Day, people look at you like you're weird. But they don't understand that Christ is coming to save us from this oppression. Right. So that we can serve the Lord without fear. Since you know your nationality according to the Bible, you know your heritage, your true heritage, all right? Read that. Read that again. Luke chapter 1 verse 74. You know. That he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear. All right. Let's get uh, Exodus chapter 20 and verse 8 real quick. All right. And then we're going to go over some of the laws that you can keep right now, sis. All right. Come on. Exodus chapter 20 verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day. Remember what? Remember the Sabbath day. Remember what? Remember the Sabbath day. No, our people, our people remember St. Patrick's Day. They remember Easter. They remember Christmas. But it, they don't remember what? Remember the Sabbath day. And that's a commandment. You understand? We remember the Sabbath day. We keep the Sabbath holy. You understand that? No buying, no selling, no cooking on the Sabbath. You prepare on uh, uh, Friday before sundown, what you're gonna have on the Sabbath day, that's how you keep it holy. You come in, you convocate with your brothers and sisters, that's how you keep it holy, you understand that, sis? All right, so um, let's get, let's get uh, First Corinthians, no, let's get Deuteronomy chapter 22. Deuteronomy 22 and 4, all right? So, sis, we went into slavery for not keeping God's laws and commandments, you understand that? And then we start sell up, uh, following all type of customs as we were scattered to the four corners of the earth. All right? Go ahead. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. You know. The woman shall not wear that which pertain unto a man. Come on. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Uh -huh. For all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. All right, so you hear this in Deuteronomy chapter 22, all right? This is one of the laws of God. Just like in Peter, it's like to put away those abominable things. And they look at you strange and funny. So, sis, let's read that again in uh, Deuteronomy 22 and 5, all right? So we're supposed to put those things away. And even when you put those things away, God gave you certain things that you should do. Hey, brother, you know your nationality according to the Bible? What's your, what's your nationality? But hold on for a second. You said uh, African-American? Sis, what's your nationality? African American. All right, if, if y'all would stay and listen, we would go over that, all right? To show you that African American means that you come from two so-called white men. Hello. Can you procreate, can two white men, two, can two so-called white men procreate and make black people? Is that possible? It's not possible at all, all right? It's not possible at all. Hey brother, you got a question? You know, you know your nationality? No? Okay, okay. Right now we're going over the nationality, all right? Let's, let's go back to, uh, right? Let's go to, uh, let's read that one more time, all right? And then we're going to go to Deuteronomy 28, all right? 
So, brother, make sure that you stay, all right, and listen to this, okay? All right, because it's, it's hitting our brothers, too. This scripture right here is hitting our brothers, too, all right? Go ahead, read that again. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. Uh -huh. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Come on. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. All right, so a woman, a woman is supposed to wear skirts, dresses, and not put on pants, right. which pertain to a man. You understand that? All right, that's one of the laws of God that we went into captivity for. All right, read on. For all that do so, and a man is not supposed to put on a woman's garment. So, brother, it's like, haven't you seen Kanye West in a skirt? You know I said, haven't you seen Young Thugger in a dress? We're not supposed to do those things. Those things are abominable to the Most High God. And those are the things that cause us to go into slavery, all right? Those things are abominable. Let's go to Deuteronomy 28 and verse 1. So the thing, what's your name, brother? Kev? Kevin. All right. What's your name, sis? Janice. All right. Abner. Nice to meet y'all. All right. Now, we're going to go over, if we kept the laws and commandments, what would happen to us as a people. All right? Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1. And it shall come to pass. Uh -huh. If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. All right, if we will hearken diligently, all right, we listen very careful, pay attention very carefully of the commandments of God. All right, come on. To observe and to do all his commandments. To observe, not just to look at them, observe them, watch them, and to do them. All right, as you start applying the laws and commandments, you will see the different changes that they have upon you and the people around you. You understand that? All right, so you observe them and you do them. You apply them. All right, come on. Which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Above all nations of the earth, all right? So, that if we kept God's laws and commandments, he would set us on high above all nations of the earth. You understand that? Now, where are people right now? In every, in every city in America, where are people mostly at? Jail or dead. The poor cities, right? All right, we're at the bottom. And most of the cities that we go to, all right? Some of the people have active, uh, uh, some of our people that scattered through the four corners of the earth, they're in active slavery right now. You understand that? All right, in chains, in bondage. You understand? Come on. Is that it? Yes, sir. Uh, let's get prison houses. All right. All right. And then we're going to get uh, 1 Corinthians 11. Okay, so Kevin, what's your name one more time, sis? Jan Janine. Janine. Janice. Janice. I'm terrible with names. I'm good with faces. All right. So please bear with me. I'm sorry, y'all. All right. So come on. Something that Kevin said is like, is it really right? All right. Our, ple our people are going to be yeah. on the bottom of society. All right. Are going to be in the ghettos. All right. And they're also going to be in the prisons. You understand that? Let's see if the Bible says that. Read. Isaiah chapter 42 verse 22 uh -huh. But this is a people Robbed and spoiled Our people are robbed and spoiled All right. So the thing is is that all the good Things that we had when we were In rulership on this earth They took from us your name Your heritage your nationality you What your homeland is or All those things were taken away from us All right even our children Our posterity was taken from us during slavery Right. I know you walked around and you seen somebody that looked like you and you're like, man, is they my cousin or my brother or what? But you understand that you will have children and they will be sold to different plantations. All right. Come on. They are all of them snared in holes uh -huh. and they are hid in prison houses. Hid where? Hid in prison houses. So a lot of times what they do is they take the man out of the household and they have that man in prison, all right? So now, the woman is left by herself to raise a family without the man. When the man is supposed to be over the household, right. the man instills the order, all right? The men make sure that different things are in place, all right? Read that. Is that finish with that? They are for a prey, and none deliver it. For a spoil, and none said, said restore. All right, so the thing is, is that you can go in for a petty crime and they persecute you to the fullest extent of the law. You understand? Or you can have you can have a, a so-called white man, all right, commit the same crime or worse and gets a lighter sentence. And don't let a cop do it. 
that happens is like, oh, they get uh, they get uh, leave with pay, suspension with pay. You understand? It's like you you're not having the same law, all right, for you. You're not having the same punishment for breaking that law. You understand? All right, come on. First Corinthians chapter eleven verse three. Now I will have you know uh -huh. that the head of every man is Christ, uh -huh. and the head of the woman is the man, uh -huh. and the head of Christ is God. So, Kevin, you paying attention to this? All right, we went to First Corinthians chapter eleven, and Janice, you paying attention to this? All right. So I said the head of every man is Christ. All right, and the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God, the Most High God. So it's the Most High God, Christ, man, woman. That's the order. You break the order, you out of order. There's no confusion with the Most High God. All right. Hey, how you doing, sir? Shalom. Okay. You know your nationality according to the Bible, or you have a question? She's fighting to help. Oh, lower the uh, prison sentences of our people. Fighting to lower the prison sentences of our people. Right. Okay. Um, that scripture, uh, trust and oppression. What's that scripture? Seven, seven. Trust and oppression. What's that? All right. Limitations. All right. So the thing is, it says. The thing is, it says. The way that you said to lower, you said to lower the prison sentences of our people, right? Yes. All right. So, I'm gonna give you a quick solution of how you lower the prison sentences of our people. You teach them the laws and commandments of God. Right. And you hold them accountable for keeping those. You understand that? All right. So the thing is, is that our people have to learn these laws and commandments. We can't trust in oppression. This system is not built for us to thrive. All right. Come on. Lamentations chapter 4 and verse 17. As for us, our eyes as yet fail for our vain help. Mm -hmm. So our eyes look for our vain help. We're looking for help from our enemies. It's vain. All right, there's, there's, there's no type of way. Oh, hold on. I understand you too. All right. Because for me, I honestly believe that we need our own laws and our own land. Exactly. You know, God. hey. Hey, all That's praise to the most high. I'm glad you said that, sis. That's how I feel. Right. But, you know, you got to take little baby steps to show people. Exactly. You know, so. Hey, sis, you said, a, you said a mouthful, all right? And it's like you take baby steps to show your people what to do. You yeah. understand? So hold that, all right? We're going we're gonna to finish the scripture. What's that? All right, all right. Hold that. Let's get uh, Isaiah 58 and verse 1. Because she's like, you know, show them bit by bit, show them what they need to do, show them where they're going wrong, and help them get fixed, right? All right? So, yeah, we need our own laws. And you know where those laws and are going to come from? Land. In our own land, right? Yeah. <laughs> this right here is our laws. That's right. right. All right? Our land is Jerusalem. That's right where we out. came from. Right. All right? It's for us to go back. We seek a country. And that country is Jerusalem. Right. right. Our homeland, where we come from. You understand? Read. Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 1. Bring so that's what we're doing today, sis. It's like, I know you're doing your thing, but this is what the men of God were commanded to do. All right? Come on. Cry aloud. Uh -huh. Spare not. Read. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. So when you play it, you ever uh, seen a marching band? Yeah. All right. When a trumpet plays, is it loud or is it soft? It's loud. It's loud, right? Yeah. So it said to do what? Cry aloud. Spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. All right, so when we teach, a lot of times it's going to come loud, all right? Even without this microphone, it's like we teach loud, all right? Because what we're supposed to do? Cry aloud. Uh -huh. Spare not. Read. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. And do what? And show my people their transgressions and the house of Jacob their sins. And show our people their transgressions and their sins, all right? Let's show what sin is, all right? Hold that. Let's show what sin is according to the Bible. Because a lot of our people have gone to church, and we think we have an idea what is sin, all right? So to keep majority of our people out of those prison houses, all right, what we do is teach them God's laws and commandments and show them how to apply them in this society. You right. understand that? Go ahead. First John chapter 3 and verse 4. Uh -huh. Whosoever committed sin transgressed also the law. Uh -huh. For sin is the transgression of the law. 
So sin is the transgression of the laws of God. You understand? So we're supposed to come out on the street, cry aloud, spare not, lift up our voice like a trumpet, and show our people our transgressions. Like you said, sis, little bit by little bit, they'll change. You understand? And so that's what we have to do ourselves. You understand that? Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.